Hey, what's up? It's Brian. I'm going to do a deal case study today. This is our first Burr rental that we did from start to finish. So I'm going to give you a behind the scenes uh, look at how it all came together from start to finish. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Burr method, so this is the process of us buying a rehab, buying a, re a property for a rental purpose. We're going to buy it. We're going to rehab it. We're going to rent it and then refinance. And then the last R is repeating that all over again. Um, we do most of these deals by purchasing them with hard money loans or a private money lender. And we're going to put the rehab into it, take it to a local bank to refinance out of it. Once it's all done, once we have a renter in there and the, the property starting to cash flow, we refinance it with the bank to pull that pay off the lenders and for the purchase and the rehab money. And then we just go do it again with the next property. So, um, I'm sure most of you are familiar with the Burr method by this point. If you listen to Bigger Pockets or yeah, pretty much any anything um, that's free on YouTube these days, but uh, we're just going to show you guys our business um, from start to finish, um, how these deals come together, and uh, the ups and downs of some of these projects. You know, um, it's not all easy. It's not. Uh, you see this guy behind me here. Um, some people think real estate's so easy. A caveman can do it. Um, I got news for you. There's ups and downs with every project, every deal, how they come together. And uh, we're just going to be transparent with you guys and show you how it, what it really takes to do these deals. So here we go. Let's uh, take a look at this case study we did on our first spur property. So this is uh, Debbie Court. Little Debbie, we like to call her these days. Well, our fond nickname for her. So, um, 8580 Debbie, this is in St. John, Missouri, 63114. If you're not familiar with St. John um, or the area here, uh, it's uh, pretty much a blue collar neighborhood. Uh, I like to say, rate, rate it as a B class neighborhood. Uh, up near the airport by Lambert Airport, right next to Highway uh, I 70, right there. Uh, central corridor that runs up the heart of uh, the whole metro area here. So it's really centrally located. Uh, a lot of people like to live around here because it's a good school district. School district, Rittner uh, schools are uh, still pretty decent uh, rated uh, as far as the area goes here in, in the public schools. Um, so about this property here, we like to tr try to stick to houses that are going to be, you know, traditional three bedrooms, close to a thousand square feet. Uh, they just tend to be in more demand and rent out easier. Uh, this is a two bedroom and 792 square feet, but it's in the, it's in the ideal neighborhood that we're looking to stay in. Uh, the house was very solid, good bones, um, just felt like we couldn't go wrong on this deal. It was such an easy, uh, easy deal from start to finish. So um, we, we kind of went outside of our box a little bit, not drastically, you know, um, and we'll talk about that a little bit more later, but uh, the house does have a full basement and a fenced yard and off street parking at the end of a, a dead end cul-de-sac circle, pretty quiet street. Uh, so how this deal came to us, this was a direct to seller lead. Uh, so a lot of the deals we find, uh, we're gonna buy them from other investors uh, who might be just looking to wholesale the property. Uh, some deals we might uh, find uh, along the, uh, the MLS from other agents that brings, bring them to us. Um, but our favorite are when we deal directly with the homeowner. There's no other agent fees involved no jumps hoops to jump through it's just us and the homeowner and we can create a win-win scenario for everybody so when this lead came in it was from a, a mail piece a postcard or letter that we sent in the mail and uh took the initial phone call when they responded and the seller was asking for sixty-one thousand. Uh, they wanted to sell fast within 30 days uh, when we look just first glance at the value of the property PropStream, which is a tool that we use um, that gives us quick uh, comps on the properties. Um, it's good if you don't have access to MLS. Uh, so their uh, estimated value gave it was 71,559 Zillow, a little bit higher at 74. So it's just a good rough shot to get a quick idea what the property might be worth. And um, yeah, that's where we like to start out with. So we know from our experience, since we've been full time at this, uh, buying houses in the area for so long, for the past few years, we know that we could probably do a little bit better. Our experience um, in the Rittner School District usually get, you know, in the past couple of years, it's been about $85 per square foot um, would be the value of the, of the property. So the seller actually canceled on the appointment here um, after we pre-qualified the lead and told her over the phone, we might only be able to pay 35 or 40,000 and she still owed 35,000 on the mortgage. So, you know, she obviously felt that wasn't gonna be worth her time. Um, followed up there a couple more times and convinced her to uh, just come out, let us come out and see what we could offer. 
And when I got there, I realized, you know, the house was not uh, in that bad of shape, as bad as she was making it out to be. Um, so we were able to make her an offer for 47000 and uh, it was, she was happy to get a quick sale and get moved on because she actually revealed she wanted to move within two weeks. So this was a really fast close. Um, there was a, a former partner of mine on the deal. I had to pay him for the marketing. So the purchase price came out to be 50,000 total. Uh, you see the before pictures here, the house, uh, we bought this back in February this year, 2020. And the house, uh, it was really good con condition. Uh, the owner there was a really tidy person, kept everything really neat and clean. Uh, she did smoke in the house. So that was really the only downfall. You can see the cabinets uh, were a little dingy and yellow here. But the, the real reason I, I walked down in this basement, the real reason I knew I wanted to buy this house and I was really bullish on it was pretty much the, when she, before she bought it, somebody had fixed it up and pretty much done everything new at that time. So you can see the roof uh, was new. It's within two, everything's within 10 years new. Uh, the systems were all updated back then. So we've got new PVC plumbing, new HVAC system, water heater, you name it. Um, everything was good to go. So we had everything checked out, no issues to worry about there. So it was really just a matter of doing a cosmetic facelift to this property. So the rehab budget, how it broke down. Uh, here's a little quick spreadsheet of what we put into it. Nothing major you'll see. It's just pretty much all cosmetics. Um, when we went into the deal, we were planning to only put three or 4,000 into it. Um, and we were going to fund the rehab with our own cash. Um, we did this deal on a hard money loan. And we decided to put our own cash into it for the rehab and just fund the purchase with the hard money lender. Because when you do a, a rehab with a hard money lender, if you use their funds, most of the times you're going to have to hold that with a, a, a draw company or an escrow company. And when you'll have to request the funds for the rehabs, there's extra fees that come along with that. Um, so the hard money lender actually recommended to us to do it this way. Um, so the couple things that we did that we weren't planning on to doing on this one here, we, uh, we thought the hardwood floors were in good shape and they would just polish up and look really nice. Um, after you got all the furniture out of the way, you see it's you know a little bit rougher than you imagined. So we had that professionally refinished and it was a good investment. And also the kitchen uh, cabinets and counters, we had that professionally refinished and totally ch changed the whole look of the kitchen. And uh, you'll see it just totally made it look like a brand new kitchen with a very, very low investment compared to replacing it with all new counters and cabinets. Um, so we, like I said, we did some of the work ourselves here. We actually did, did all the painting ourselves, some power washing, some little random handyman stuff. Um, so that saved us, you know, probably over 1500 bucks in the long run. We only ended up putting about 5,000 into it and um, you'll see how it turned out here. So the front, uh, you know, just power washing and throwing down some mulch to give it a little more curb appeal. We cleaned up, uh, trimmed up all the bushes and everything, pulled all the weeds and it just you know, gave it a quick, nice little facelift. Um, the backyard, I mean, this deck was our, like pretty much brand new and fresh stain on it. We didn't have to do anything with that. Really just a lot clean up. Uh, here's our beautiful paint job that Jake and I did on the inside. Something we'll probably do in the future that we did on this one is just remove any fans like this. Um, just do a, a recessed, uh, what do you call it? The, uh, just the standard uh, globe lights, they call them, I guess. Um, the hardwoods turned out great. Love it. And then the kitchen totally looks brand new. So we added some crown molding on the top and added some new hardware on there and then changed the color of it and the painted the counters as well. Actually kept the appliances, and this was a lesson learned here too, about a month into, uh, after we rented it out, that fridge went out and we ended up having to replace it. It was kind of a uh, whole ordeal because this was in the middle of the pandemic shutdown. Supply, supply chains were having a really tough time getting new supplies. So it took us a while to get a fridge. Our tenants were upset, but we figured it all out, got behind it. So the biggest thing we're looking to do with all these rental properties is just try to make them as bulletproof as possible since we're gonna be hanging on to them for 10, 15, 20 years. So we wanna try to get all the deferred maintenance done up front. In this case here, we didn't have to do a whole lot. Um, these LVP floors in the kitchen were already there. Uh, the bathroom had tile all, all in it, which we like to see. It just really needed a deep cleaning and uh, the fresh paint just you know really brightened it up. And then you see here the basement, why we bought it, we didn't have to do anything but it looks like uh, everything was just updated, you know? So that's how it turned out on the rehab. 
so when we went to refinance the house, um, we actually waited six months to let the house season before we went to refi it with the bank. Um, and this was a lesson learned here on our first one. Uh, we probably could have started that process right away, but we did not have a relationship with our local bank yet. And we really wanted to you know, show the consistent bank ro uh, rent rolls and uh, have something to present to them. So we felt safer about you know, get refinancing it at what we really needed it to. So over this, this summer, the St. Louis market was just on fire and the whole real estate market nationwide pretty much was. But we saw comps on the rise. Um, like I said earlier, we typically plan on you know, $85 to $90 per square foot for the Rittner School District area here. And um, we were starting to see comps go way over that. Um, we had a house on the corner uh, that sold for 100000 And um, when we pulled the comps again before we went to take it to the bank, um, we were seeing price per square foot from 94 up to 128 per square foot. So that was 113 average. Now we're sitting here looking like we have an 80 to $90,000 house, you know, about 10 to 15 more than we were originally planning. So we were really hoping it's going to work out in our favor. Favor, Like I said earlier, we were planning on leaving some money in the deal here. We kind of rolled the dice um, on the end value. We knew the numbers were going to be tight, but you know, we felt like it was a low risk deal to get, you know, get our rental portfolio going and get everything started. Um, we were okay with leaving a little bit money in the deal if we had to. We knew it was going to cash flow good, um, but everything worked out here in the long run. So the total numbers here on the buy, the rehab, the rent, and the refinance purchase uh, came out to be total of 53150 That includes all our upfront closing costs and uh, lender fees. They roll it all into the loan up front. So we didn't have to bring a check to the closing. So that was great. Close it on Valentine's Day this year, 2020. Uh, we funded this with faster funds. They're a local hard money lender here in the St. Charles, Missouri area. They do uh, lending in the whole St. Louis region. We really like those guys there. Um, paid them 4,500 bucks in interest over that period. But the best part is we got it rented out within six weeks of our purchase. Um, I think we yeah, I'll show you here, April 1st is when the lease started. Um, so we ended, only ended up, ended up having to make that first uh, lender payment on that interest. So the whole goal with these bird, bird deals is get in and get back out of them as quick as you can and limit the money you're putting into the deal. Uh, the repairs, uh, 6,700 total, that's what we told the bank, uh, is actually a little bit lower, but that's uh, what our spreadsheet said. Um, Rent came out to 875 on April 1st. We got it leased out. The first week we uh, started advertising it, we got multiple applications and we got a highly qualified tenant right away. So we went ahead and signed them up and got them in there. Uh, we were originally looking at a lower rent when we first did our initial deal analysis when we did the purchase. Um, we were, you know, Zillow said, I think 775. And my experience said we could probably get around 800. Um, we had a, uh, a friend in our local mastermind that we were talking to the deal about. And he had a, a house right around the corner, a little bit bigger and it had a garage, but he was getting 925, maybe 950, I think. And so we're like, oh, well, let's, let's try to push it here and see how we can do. And uh, did not scare anybody away. We got multiple ap applicants uh, and just worked out great. So uh, the appraisal came in at 83,693. A uh, little lesson learned here with the appraisal. Uh, we presented a packet with, uh, you know, all the repairs that we did, um, all the comps that we were looking at that we wanted the adjust the appraiser to consider. Um, we handed that to him at the property and he basically threw it over his shoulder in, in the back of his truck. And I don't think he ever looked at it. So when we got the appraisal back, I don't think it had any of the comps that we had listed, but uh, maybe it would just give him the idea of what we uh, were going for here. We actually told him what we were requesting uh, for the new loan to be. So I think that gave him the idea of where we needed to come in at. Um, the refinance, uh, the, the bank did it at 62,000, which is 74% of our loan to value of the appraisal. Um, we did this with First State Bank here, their local bank uh, in St. Charles, Missouri. And um, so that means we were able to pull out all of our money back out that we put into the deal with the purchase of the hard money lender and our own rehab money. And it became a true zero out of pocket burr deal. Um, now it's cash flowing at 200 bucks a month after all the expenses. Now that's after uh, the new loan payment, um, all the annual insurance taxes and what we set aside for vacancy and maintenance. Uh, we're at 200 bucks a month. Not a home run deal. 
it's still at the low end of uh, what we like to target for monthly cash flow. But for our first deal to get going, I mean, we're happy with it. Um, we'd be happy to get a hundred more of these little Debbies just like this one here. So, um, so the biggest lesson learned here, I guess, um, to get going on this one, you know, we, we kind of took a risk. We weren't sure if the numbers were going to all work out or not. The biggest misconception, uh, that a lot of these, you know, what, that you'll hear about these bird deals is, um, or from any other real estate investing gurus or whoever, you're going to be no money out of pocket. This is all passive. Um, you know, real estate, buying rentals, it's, it's just easy. Like I said, a caveman can do it. Um, you know, what we found out here is you have to be willing to leave a little bit money in the deal in a lot of cases, you know. Um, yeah, even if you're going to be pulling money out for a, from a private lender or a hard money loan to do the purchase and the rehab, there's still going to be stuff popping up that you're going to have to account for, whether it's uh, starting the insurance premium, you got to pay that yearly premium up front, uh, just starting utilities on the property, uh, just stuff that you might not have accounted for that's outside your budget, like blinds, you know, all your tenants are going to want to have blinds on their windows and it's pretty much required. Um, so just some stuff we learned here and how it all worked out and, you know, it went, it all worked out pretty well in the long run. Um, you know, no major, uh, surprises here or anything like that to worry about. Uh, we've got some other deals in the pipeline that are being worked on right now that we've had, have had some surprises on. So they they don't all go so smooth and just how you're, uh, how you're expecting it to be. So, but it, we're pretty happy with this first one, how it turned out. So if you guys like videos like this, uh, make sure you like this and uh, stay tuned. We'll be putting out new case studies. Uh, we're buying new rental properties uh, every month. So we'll have uh, some, some more deals to go over, more properties to talk about. So stay, stay tuned. Thanks for watching this and hanging out.